Well, hello, brothers and sisters of Living Hope Church. And um, as we gather around tonight at the, the foot of the cross, and we reflect on what the cross means to us, and we really take in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, I just wanted to offer my own thoughts in the way of a little study, really, on uh, what the cross means to me. Uh, I do hope that we can all get something from this and that we can all realise just the extent of what our Lord Jesus did for us. So, reflections on the cross. It's a time when we can stop our routine, sit and really think about what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. What does the cross mean to us? How does it impact our lives? Is the cross just a symbol of God's love? Or is it more than that? Friends, there is a legacy of the power of the cross that our reflections on the cross tonight can reveal. It can show that through Christ's finished work at Calvary, our salvation has a spiritual and also a tangible effect on us. This is not something that can be summarised in a few minutes, but I'll try my best to do that. So, okay, for the sake of this study then, we'll uh, think it might be helpful if uh, we can think of our salvation in three epochs or time frames, past, present and future. So, because of Jesus' finished work at Calvary, we have been justified, we are being sanctified, and we will be glorified. This is the great legacy of the cross. It has changed us, keeps changing us, and will change us. Okay, so this word justified, Romans 5, chapter, uh, verse 1 says therefore since we have been justified through faith we have a peace with god through our lord jesus christ so justified or justification this is a legal term which means to be made right or declared righteous so by faith alone the lord jesus has made us right with god through his death on the cross amen the righteousness of jesus has been imputed to us so when god looks at us he sees Christ's righteousness and not our own sin. Isn't that marvellous? Mind-blowing, I've written down here. We've got to be happy about that, surely. It's got to fill us with joy. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21 says, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And the whole to him says, uh, all who plunge beneath that flood lose all their gu guilty stains. And that's the hymn, there is a fountain filled with blood. What a great hymn that is. So there we go, a legal decision by God for sinful man. <clears throat> we know God's character to be truthful and just, therefore he can't legally go back on this action. Amen. So, We've been justified, now we are being sanctified. And as we gather tonight around the foot of the cross and reflect, we look upon our Lord Jesus, our great sanctifying high priest. So sanctified, Hebrews 10, 14 says, For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So God has made us holy or sanctified as we are declared righteous in Christ. But we are continuously being made holy or sanctified day by day through the power of the Holy Spirit as we continue on our journey to being transformed into the image of Christ. What a thought that is, to being transformed into the image of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Isn't that a wonderful thought, that we are daily being changed to be more like our Saviour? This gives us great confidence and comfort as we reflect on the cross. Our daily striving and repulsion of sin is proof 
that we are being sanctified, dear friends. Isn't that a wonderful thought again? And as Paul says in Romans 7, 22 to 23, For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind. So we delight in the truth of the gospel, but our sinful nature rages against it. Okay, so we've done justified, sanctified, and if that wasn't good enough, the best is yet to come. Friends, one day we will be like him. This is our final transformation because of Christ's finished work at Calvary. Let's reflect on the cross tonight and worship. We will, when Christ returns, we will be glorified. The final chapter in the story of redemption. So glorified, okay, this, it's a stunning doctrine right here. Not only will we see Jesus in all his glory, but we will share with him in it. 1 John 3 says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Take a while to consider this. It's truly astounding. The restoration of creation, the glorification of our bodies, and as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 49, and as we have borne the image of the man of dust, humans, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, Jesus. So we will, we will have the image of God restored in us and we will know the glory of God in ways we have never experienced before. Paul talks about receiving an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Wow. I certainly can't wait for that and look forward to that immensely. So there we have it, just a brief look at three doctrines really of salvation in three different time frames: past, present and future. Justified, sanctified and glorified. And in a way we've only scratched the surface of the work of the cross and I would really encourage you to find out more, get stuck into the Bible, get stuck into Bible commentaries just to really to discover the depth of your salvation, the cost Jesus paid for it, and the joy everlasting because of it. So I'll sign off now with my favourite verse of scripture, which is 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 54 to 55. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O grave, where is your sting? Amen.